G'day trainers and welcome back to part 14 of the Pokemon Legends Arceus Let's Play series. So, in the last part, we uh, got access to a new mount. So, we got access to this bad boy. Look how cool that is. You actually become... Well, you essentially become the Pokemon. But look at this. You're hiding away in the back here. Look at those eyes. Is that not the creepiest thing you've ever seen? Uh, anyway, so it is telling us to start climbing. Let's go and give our first go at climbing with this Pokemon a go. Oop. That's pretty quick. Ooh, okay. Doesn't look like there's any... Okay, you can jump downwards. I think it's more of a let go though than an actual jump. Oh my. Look how close we are to the space-time rift. That is... that is great and I reckon we can get even higher. But before we do that, we've got a Gligar to catch. Alright, so we're just gonna come in, see if we can take it with a heavy ball. We're sneaking up behind. Oh, and it looks like it's asleep. Excellent. So we'll sleep, backshot it. Hopefully that should be enough. Great work. Okay, so instead of just continuing to climb, I want to take this opportunity to continue to walk around this area because I think there are going to be a lot of Pokemon we haven't yet encountered. Um, as you might have seen before and as you can see now, we've obtained a al sorry, an Alpha Snorlax. Uh, so he is the one from the Obsidian Fieldlands, so in between the last two episodes I did a quick run back to fill out some Pokedex pages. Uh, we have now... Uh, we've now perfected a couple of them, so I believe we've now got a perfect... Uh, a perfect Bidoof page, a perfect Starly page, and maybe a perfect Shinx or Wurmple. Uh, I'd, I'd need to double check, but... Uh, it was nice having those perfected, so that increases the, the chance of shiny versions of those Pokemon by quite a lot. Um, but look, let's get back to this battle with this Gligar. I should have been doing it as I was talking, uh, but I guess I didn't think that far ahead. So I haven't touched on it a lot, but the... the uh, so I haven't touched on it a lot, but the attack animations of the Pokemon in this game are absolutely outstanding. Like, uh, I, I don't know what this is going to look like, I haven't used a Zen Headbutt before, but Gligar's attack just then looked so cool! Okay, so, apparently Gligar's just here to troll me. Alright, we've got one more go. Well, hopefully we get it, otherwise Snorlax is probably going to Oh, that was not a lot of damage. Alright, and while I am bringing out another type, something else happened while I was in the field lands. Uh, so, I actually came across, uh, and I think we, we went there once before, maybe while we were getting a bunch of side quests done. But I came across a, a lake. Uh, it was Lake um, Lake Verity, I think, uh, or one, one of the lakes. Uh, it has a little island in the middle, and there were a lot of Gyarados. I actually ran into an Alpha Gyarados who wiped the entire team in my attempt at trying to catch it. It was a very unpleasant situation. Uh, it just wasn't a good time for anybody. Excellent, so easily took out that Gligar with Gudra. On that, am I the only one that's a little upset with what they did to, to Gudra? I mean, come on. It, it looks... it looks depressed. It looks horribly depressed. And, yeah, I don't know, that's just not the Gudra I had come to know and love. What have we got here? So it was another Graveler. We haven't had a wild graveler in a little while, so that's uh, that is a bit nice. We might use our Gudra for that because we can just hydro pump it nice and quickly, and finish it off. Okay, 
starters. See what I mean? Look at it. It's got a goofy smile, but it's eyes. It looks... It just looks so sad. Excellent. There's always going to be a one-hit KO. So, good to see. What else have we got up here? So, we have got some iron chunks on the ground. So, iron chunks are definitely starting to become one of the more valuable resources being needed in a lot of the more high-end Pokeballs being crafted. So I found uh, I'm running out of those the most now. So the longer we spend here on Mount Coronet, the more and more I am regretting not catching one of those Gyarados or uh, even bringing the Alpha Boy. Oh my lord, we have an Alpha. Like, ah. Oh. Alright, so. Let's see if, from a distance, I can hit them with one of these wing balls. Maybe we can get it nice and sneaky and then try to work our way over to the alpha. Leaden ball. <laughs> hey, that's right, we got the alpha gabite. And the little gibble's back. Let's see if we can just risk this with a regular old Pokeball. Can we, can we, can we? Cool. Oh, he was only level 20. Oh, hello. That's an Alpha Glyscor down there. Alright guys, so after 10 minutes of healing up and fighting my way through wave after wave of level 54, level 55, 56 Gligars, uh, we are finally down in that last patch of grass, getting ready to line up this Alpha Glyscor. So we're going to start off with just a wing ball, see if we can get it from the distance. Uh, look, part of me thinks that's not going to happen, but hey, you don't know if you don't try. Alright, so we broke through first pretty easily. Uh, look, I would have been very happy if you went in, but I just, I wasn't expecting it. Okay, and now he is very, oh, okay. Lost interest in me, maybe. Let's try again. Why does that happen? Is it because they're on edge, or is it too far away? Uh, can anyone tell me why that happens? It's weird. Alright, let's see if I've got anything for it to eat. I'll bring it a bit closer, maybe. It's terrifying how happy it looks. Alright, so we caught it eating. Let's, uh... Okay, nope, that's alright. Didn't really expect it again. I thought this would be a pr problem. Might have to battle it. Um, but look, if we can avoid a battle, because all my Pokemon are only at half health, doesn't look like that's going to happen, though. Seventy-seven. So, this is now to date. Of course, our level 45 Snorlax can't handle that at only half health anyway. Uh, but yeah, to date, this is now the highest leveled Pokemon we have come across in the entire game. In the 26 or 27 hours that I've been playing. Uh, and we're not done yet. So that makes me very excited about what future locations hold. Also makes me wonder, do maybe alphas... Do they scale to your level? Um, maybe random encounter alphas, but I feel like this glass score is a an alpha lock, so it's always going to be here under the right circumstances. Um, Alright, so let's see what sort of attack we can drop on. Let's put in Hypnosis first. Get it a little drowsy. Perfect, that should hopefully make it a bit easier to hit. And let's hit him with the Dark Pulse. Alright, I recommend here with maybe two more, maybe, uh, but that's probably going to kill Haunter, so <laughs> maybe not. Alright, so we're going to bring it out because Kudra has got Hydro Pump, and that will be super effective against Glasgow. But with the lower level, it shouldn't kill it, hopefully, but anyway. Well, that's heartbreaking. That is utterly, utterly heartbreaking.
Look at this. Surely this is not all places that I can explore. I mean, it, it's empty, but still. Alright, there we go. We've just caught our first wild Sneasel. And it does look like Sneasel is also a Hisuian variant. Uh, because this is definitely not what Sneasel or Sneasel's shiny form looks like. But apparently pretty easy to catch. Granted, it was asleep. <laughs> Took it from the back. Uh, so yeah, I guess I shouldn't be too too proud or braggy about that, but hey, you gotta take a win where you can. Okay, so it's kind of like uh, just fishing for magic up here. Uh, I wonder if they will be easy to catch like this. There goes one. We get it. No, we didn't. What about this one? Alright, so there's the first one. It's only level 18. Uh, and if Legends Arceus follows the regular evolution life cycle for a magic card, that means only two more levels until it hits 20. Oh, <laughs> obviously. Two more levels until it can evolve into a Gyarados. Uh, that being said, at this point in the game, a level 20 Gyarados is not going to be a lot of help to us. Uh, but the more we catch, the more of its Pokedex will fill out. And the more likely we will be to find into either a shiny Magikarp or a shiny Gyarados. I mean, who doesn't want and who doesn't love the red Gyarados? Lake of Rage Gyarados. It is an absolute beast. So, we are going to then have to either look out for a... I believe it's a gold Magikarp or a red Gyarados. Okay, what do we got? We got a bunch of Gravelers rolling around. We got some Machokes. Uh, kind of rolling around in pairs. That's kind of cool. And apparently that is the first Graveler we have caught. Uh, that doesn't make sense to me, but fine. And it is ridiculous that these random wild Pokemon are just so much more leveled than we are. Uh, they are taking out half my Pokemon's health with one hit, and unfortunately at the moment, thanks to not bringing any healing items, uh, well, all they need to do is be able to take out half our health and they win. But that's okay. We are, we're not actually in any danger at the moment because we will easily be able to go back and get some health items, or go for a nice old rest. But that Machoke definitely wants a piece of us. Let's go with a strong style flamethrower. Okay, so Typhlosion's ghost type. Uh, ghost typing has definitely helped us out this run. Let's see if we can catch this level 44 Macho and get one step close to getting that uh, 10 star, or oh, I guess level 10 Pokedex page entry. I love it when things go that smoothly. Alright, we've only got 13 wing balls left. Uh, and I don't know why I crafted wing balls, I thought I would have crafted jet balls. Uh, maybe I misread, uh, or maybe they were labelled wrong, but I, not labelled wrong, uh, but in the wrong order. Don't think that's uh, very likely though, it's more likely that I just misread. It seems like I can't go higher than this. Maybe this is... Oh, okay, yeah. Probably can't go any further. 
That's alright. Let's just get this tree, and then I think we might fast travel back. Alright, and the second we have got our Alpha Gabite out, turns out he is more than ready to become an Alpha Garchomp. So, let's return to his ball and, uh, and be back in just a second. So, let's bring out Garchomp and see how big he is. He is gigantic. What about next to Snorlax? Hey, he might not be as... No, he's a, he's a dwarf compared to Snorlax, but still. Hello, you absolutely terrifying, beautiful creature. Oh, alright. Okay, it's like we found some ruins. We've got a Wisp over in the distance. We've got a Pseudo Budo here. Let's see if we can get it with a Wing Ball from far away. Ah, uh, what? Okay. Let's see if I can sneak up on it and use a Leaden Ball. Alright, and look at that. We've got a giant Palkia statue right here. Is there a... Di there it is, and there's a Dialga over there. Uh, look, and I've said it before, I, I was Diamond over Pearl uh, recently, I even got Brilliant Diamond over Shining Pearl, but it, it's not just that bias, I guess. Dialga is so much cooler than Palkia. I mean, come on. Uh, I feel bad for the, for the Diamond Clan in here, I just... I know if we, if we do end up having to pick sides, uh, and one side wins, meaning the other side has to lose, then, you know, well, that's just it. The diamond, ah, uh, the Pearl Clan is going to lose. Hello there! Alright, guys, we just found our first Electabuzz of the game. I do wish I had some Wing Balls or Jet Balls uh, to get this guy from behind and uh, capture him, but I think we're going to have to get a little bit closer, and I have a feeling they are going to be hostile. And probably have a pretty decent range for aggro too. But of course, now that I've said that, I guarantee none of that's true. Perfect. First ball. Right, I know we'll definitely be adding Electabuzz to the team, so... Uh, I believe that was Electabuzz and Gligar will be adding, so I think Machoke and Snorlax are out as of uh, probably the end of this episode, or maybe the next episode, but I guess we'll see. I have no idea how he didn't just see me then, or aggro onto me. Uh, not complaining though. Excellent and nice. We got a level 69 elect alpha electivire. Uh, that that is going to make a very nice collection to the team. I guess we should probably get some uh, some of the last uses out of our Machoke, uh, Snorlax, and maybe even Rhydon. But I don't know. I think they're just a little too underleveled. Not their fault. Uh, that's, that's on me, but, yeah, uh, that's just the way it is. <laughs> Welcome to Moonview Arena, the seat of Lord Electrode. I know I've not exactly been supportive of you reaching this place, but a part of me did hope you'd make it. Call me contradictory all you like, Galaxy Grunt, but such is life. Embracing the complexity of both ourselves and the world can only help us grow. As a member of the Diamond Clan, my highest calling is to please Almighty Sinnoh. And right now, that means I must protect my lord by stopping you where you stand. If you still wish to defeat me and gain entry to Electrode's seat, you and your little Pokemon welcome to give it your best shot. Let's go, Skuntank. Give them another whiff of your silent deadliness. Wow, he's doing a 3v1, really. 
seems like a bit of a dick move, but I guess that's what you get when you're versing someone like him. Wow, really? Six attacks before I even got my second. If Zubat goes again, six anyway. Well, it would have been six. That is intense. Good thing the rest of his Pokemon are so laughably underleveled. Let's make one thing clear. I didn't lose. You may have won, but there's a difference. It's not, not at all Melly. I just lacked, uh, time. Yes, I'm afraid there simply wasn't enough time for me to raise my Pokemon nice and strong. Ah, uh, could this be why Adamant is always going on and on about time being a precious thing? My word, the Diamond Clan and Almighty Sinnoh truly are never-ending founts of wisdom. Yes, yes, I know what comes next. You want to know what pleases Lord Electrode, so you can make some bombs for it. Well, I'm afraid I won't be able to help you. Because I have completely forgotten what Electrode lacks. What's the matter? Upset. Too bad anger doesn't make bombs. Melly's really giving you the runaround, isn't he, Pokey Boy? I guess it's my fault for not telling you in advance what Electrode lacks. So, here's the... Adaman! Oh, what a whining little bitch. <sighs> what now? I could hear you just now, you know. Are you really going to tell this little noodle what he needs to find, just like that? Lest we all forget, you're the leader of the Diamond Clan. Why do you bother with these galaxy louts? Use your eyes, Melly. Haven't you even looked at your frenzied lord? Don't you feel even a twinge at how it suffers, fighting to control the energy that's bursting out of it? I see nothing but a Pokemon overcome with joy at being among almighty Sinnoh's chosen ones. Anyway, it's not like trials or suffering always cause for doom and gloom. These things exist to help us grow. I'm sorry, Melly. I can't write off these frenzies as some trial from Almighty Sinnoh. That's why I'm doing the best I can to help out Pokeboy here. This is bigger than what team or clan we belong to. Oh, and by the way, I wasn't just going to tell him what he needs crunchy salt. I was going to go right ahead and give it to him. Now, it's time to make some bombs. So lend me a hand. Both of you. Fine. At the end of the day, let none say that the great Melly shirked his duties as warden. I'll help you make your precious bombs. There. I made you a practically infinite supply of bombs. So chuck all you like at Electrode, but don't underestimate my lord's strength. I very much doubt the likes of you can quell it. Even knowing you're doomed to fail, you still wish to pit yourself against Electrode. I'm ready to battle. <laughs> you have a great deal more pluck than you have sense, I'll give you that. A word of advice? Don't stop moving while you're battling Electrode, or you'll be dead in no time.
just a bunch of volt orbs. <laughs> Lord of the Hollow Electrode. I'd like to know how he got up. Oh, John. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Looks so cartoonish. It's so crazy. I want to know how we got up in a tree is what I was trying to say. Is there a way I'm meant to... I don't know, am I just meant to run? Do as many as I can in that time. I guess that might be it. I mean, it's not taking a long time to take his health down. Wow. Okay, so he is going to stun himself, essentially. I think it's a good, uh, I think this is a good way of showing just how damaging the frenzy power to these noble Pokemon really are. I mean, you can see it in Electrode's face, just how uncomfortable he really is with all this. That was so close. Jeez. Alright, if I can get the first hit, we should be fine. But if he gets me with another energy ball, this could be all it. Especially for a strong style. Yup. Bye, guy chomp. That's alright, we can come in with a super effective sludge bomb with Gudra. Oh no, they're gonna fall soon. Last chance, there we are. Oh, we got the zap plate. I thought his scowl might have turned to a bit of a smile at least. Oh, for shame. What utter calamity. I 
I agreed to make those accursed bombs, yes. But now that Almighty Sinnoh's precious blessing has vanished forever, it's just so unbearably sad. Is that how you see it? Electrode looks relieved to me. Glad its suffering's ended, probably. Oh, come on, Adamant, seriously? That's just your wishful thinking, nothing more. All your preaching doesn't ruffle me one bit, but if Almighty Sinnoh grows angry with me because of this, I don't know what I'll do. I arrive, right on schedule. Now what did you bother coming back for? Only to say that I recalled some things after Pokeboy did me the honour of travelling with me. Things to do with a world where I believe I lived before my memories were lost. Most people there caught Pokemon, lived with them, formed supportive partnerships with them, and then, there were the Pokemon Trainers. The ones we called Pokemon Trainers were truly devoted to their craft. They always looked toward the next challenge and had Pokemon battles every chance they got, all to help themselves and their Pokemon grow. Through battle, Trainers forged bonds of understanding with their Pokemon, and with their opponents and their Pokemon too. With everything, I suppose. If Pokemon and people work together, we can forge new paths ahead. We'll be lost to history if we go on believing only Pokemon can be strong, or if we go on fearing them instead of understanding them. Interesting. Was your world like Ingo described too, Pokeboy? It sure was. I'd never have thought such a world could exist. Oh, once again. The brilliant Warden merely has realised something rather clever. It's not just my Pokemon that need to be strong, it's me as well. The greater my valour and might, the more my Pokemon can reach their potential. I wonder if Almighty Sinnoh will be pleased once I've achieved exactly that. Hey, Adamant. Share with me again the wisdom of Almighty Sinnoh passed down among our clan. Alright, alright. Open your ears, shut that big mouth. And listen well, my friend. Give not into sorrow, give not into anger, only offer friendship to those around you. Bring not Almighty Sinnoh to sorrow, for that is when time's flow will cease. And there you have it. <laughs> Bravo. Excellent. Please, all of you, do your best and run toward the destination an even higher state. Of course, your higher state is clear, Pokeboy. It surely lies with the next lord. Now this time I really will make the complete return trip to Jubilife Village. Perhaps with someone like Pokeboy to show what Pokemon need not be feared, the people of Haisue will find new tracks forward. Now, begging your pardon, I owe Commander Kamado my report. Until next time, Pokeboy. Can we find a way to honour our past while also forging a better future? Maybe that's what Almighty Sinnoh really wants from us. After all, it rules over all time, and it created everything there is. Be ready to shield your eyes, Galaxy Grunt. I'm going to polish up both myself and Electrode until our strength and brilliance are blinding. Hmm. So... Warden Melia believes that the frenzies of these Pokemon are some sort of trial set by Almighty Sinnoh. We cannot know if that is the case or not, but it does beg the question, why ever would Almighty Sinnoh drive the nobles to frenzy? Is it angered by something, or does it seek to drive a wedge between people and Pokemon? Well, far be it from us humans to fathom the thought of Pokemon. And what is that space-time rift anyway? What caused it to open? Hmm, but you must be tired. Go on, then to the wallflower. Get some rest while you can. I've instructed Benny to prepare you his finest potato mochi. Ah, oh, thanks, mate. Dinner's on Kamado tonight. Eat your fill. 
What an enticing aroma. My appetite just went through the roof. Quite a change from the commander's usual preaching about tightening our belts until things grow more stable. Well, I've heard talk that our progress surveying Pokemon has made gathering ingredients a less onerous or at least less dangerous task. It's almost like a fairy tale, isn't it? How you've fallen to us from the sky and gone on to help the people of Haisue so much? Indeed. Taking on such perilous duties has earned you a great deal of trust, Pokeboy. It's like I always say, behavior is a mirror that reflects one's true nature. You let your actions do the speaking for you, Pokeboy, and the message is clear as day. It doesn't matter one whit where you came from. You're part of the Survey Corps and Jubilife Village now. Isn't it nice getting up early? Is it? It's not as if getting up early changes what you can do with the day. Yes, it does. It opens up possibilities, such as responding to Commander Kamado's invitation today in a timely manner. Well, I got that same invitation, and I had to wake up even earlier than you to run all the way here for it. Come on, no need to grouse so much over a nice little early wake up. Are you coming too? I'm sure we all can guess what the commander wants with us. Yes, do come. Galaxy Hall is quite close anyway. You've now quelled the frenzy of four nobles. On to the next one. When word of these frenzies arrived from all over Haisue, I feared that what would become of us. But here we are, already preparing to quell the final noble. Yeah, who would have dreamed some stranger who tumbled out of the sky would be our salvation? Life never does stop surprising you. The only lord left to be quelled is Avalug, which lives in the Alabaster Icelands. He is also the largest of the nobles, according to what a reader told me. Your mission is to quell Avalug, the final lord. And perhaps in doing so, we may trigger some change in the space-time rift as well. Avalok may be the Pearl Clan's noble, but my clan and the Galaxy team will have to step up to resolve this too, for the sake of a brighter future. Then, let us all meet in the cold reaches of the Alabaster Icelands. Until then! No matter how many of these frenzied Pokémon you may quell, the fact remains that you are a stranger to our world. No small number of people still regard you with suspicion and distrust. The most of you can hope for is to gain the trust of as many as possible, and to do that, you must prove yourself through your actions. Uh, Abra! Teleport this Wurmple outside, at once! <clears throat> so, you're to survey the Alabaster Icelands next? This is the most treacherous climb you'll face in all of Hasue. It would not be an exaggeration to say that you might be the only one among the Survey Corps I can task with surveying the Alabaster Icelands. You know your orders? See your mission through. Okay, trainers, this is where we are going to call an end to part 14 of our Pokemon Legends Arceus Let's Play. So, we have one final Frenzied Noble to quell, and I have seen some screenshots of the size of this Avalog, and it is ridiculously huge. I'm very excited, uh, but guys, I guess that will be for episode 15. Bye.